When was the last time that something good turned into too much of a good thing? Maybe on your birthday, mom let you eat all the ice cream you wanted, but afterward, your stomach didn't feel so good. It could be you got an awesome new game, but you couldn't stop playing even after lights out. And the next morning, you could barely get out of bed. Or maybe you love to make your friends laugh. What gives you the power to walk through walls? A door! <laughs> but you can't stop doing silly things in class, so you get in trouble with the teacher. God has given us so many good gifts to enjoy and good things to do, but even the tastiest food or most fun activity can cause trouble if you don't know when to stop. And just knowing what's best isn't enough. You have to actually do it. Choose against one more scoop. Put down the game. Truth is, none of us are good at showing self-control on our own. We need help. But here's the good news. Self-control is a gift of God's Holy Spirit. When we ask God for help and choose to keep walking with Jesus, it becomes easier to make the wise choice. To say no when a good thing becomes too much. When you can tell God, I will remember that your way is better and you live it out, others can see God at work in you. That's why self-control is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. You're the way, the truth, the life. Jesus, show me how to choose what's right. When my feelings just aren't on my side. I know that you help me every time. You are the goodness of life. Lab. This week, we're taking a look at the story of someone who faced a really tall temptation. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sanjay. This month, we're talking about how we can trust God to help us do what's best. 
Some decisions are easy, like should I try out for a sports team? If you like being active, competitive, and spending a fun time with your friends, the answer is an easy yes. But some decisions can be difficult. Like trying to decide which sport to try this year. Basketball, soccer, or volleyball. All three balls are kind of similar. But the actual games are pretty different. So many options. Oh, uh, what am I gonna do? You have just spoken the secret phrase! Secret phrase? What did you say? I said, what am I gonna do? You have just spoken the secret phrase again! And now, you've initiated a choice challenge! Oh, like practicing choices? Yes! Today's decision-making game is meal or no meal. Are we talking real food here? Because I can always use a snack. <laughs> Let's play it! Meal or no meal! This is the game where you make choices to put together a complete lunch. Your job is to view two images and choose the best option. Seems easy enough. Here is your first choice. Is this real? You can't eat boots? Obviously we're choosing grilled cheese. Is that your final answer? Yes, of course, it's a grilled cheese sandwich. You have chosen grilled cheese sandwich. Here is your second choice. Well, they are both orange. The carrots look like tiny little bricks. If you cut them right, you can make a tiny little edible log cabin. Edible, that's our keyword here. So we choose carrots, of course. Is that your final answer? Um, yes. You have chosen the carrots. I don't see the challenge in this challenge. Here is your third choice. There it is. They both look like soup. The red one's really red. Maybe it's actually ketchup? The orangey one seems like it has a little more texture. Hold on. The red one, that looks like a rim. Like the rim on a paint can. Ew. No paint for lunch. I think the other one is tomato soup. We're going to go with that one. Is that your final answer? Yes, definitely. Here is your final choice. Ooh, this one's tricky. Maybe they're both water? They're both clear liquids. Maybe we can tell from the bottle? Well, one's a twisty top. And that one has a fancy top. Aren't those fancy ones used for oil and vinegar? Vinegar. Ugh. Let's go with the twisty cap. Is that your final answer? Yes. yes. You have completed the meal or no meal challenge. You've chosen a grilled cheese sandwich, carrots, tomato soup, and a bottle of vinegar. We chose the vinegar. Enjoy your meal. Well, that was a fail. The first choices were so easy. But the last one, hard pass on drinking vinegar. You gotta know when to say no. Speaking of which, it's time for the story before the story! Today we're in the book of Luke, in the New Testament. But long before, in the very beginning, God created a wonderful world. When people turned away from God, the world was broken. At the perfect time, God sent a rescuer, God's own son, Jesus. Jesus came as a baby. Over the years, he grew in wisdom and showed love to God and to others in everything he did. When Jesus was about 30, he came to the Jordan River to be baptized by his cousin John. As Jesus rose up from the water, God spoke from heaven and said, You are my son and I love you. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Erica. Jesus had just been baptized by his cousin John. Everyone heard the voice of God say that Jesus is God's son. You'd think this would be the perfect time for Jesus to begin his ministry, right? But instead, God's Spirit led Jesus into the desert. For 40 days, Jesus chose not to eat anything as he focused on spending time with God. Can you imagine going 40 days without food? No pizza, or french fries, or even bread. By the end of this time, Jesus was not just a little hungry, he was mega hungry. And that's when his enemy, the devil, showed up with a sneaky plan. If you are the son of God, tell this stone to become uh, bread. It is written, 
man must not live only on bread. Let's just pause for a second. Jesus had God's power. He could have turned that stone into a nice toasty loaf of bread. But Jesus knew the devil was tempting him to take the easy path. Jesus had spent his whole life studying scripture and learning God's words. They were rooted deeply in his heart. So in the moment, Jesus knew exactly what to say. But the devil wasn't done yet. The devil led Jesus to a high place and in a flash showed him all the kingdoms of the world. I will give you all their authority and glory. I can give it to anyone I want. If you worship me, it will all be yours. It is written, worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. Again, Jesus had God's words in his heart and mind. He was ready to respond. At last, the devil led Jesus to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. It is written, the Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. Now, the devil was using scripture too, but Jesus was still ready. He knew it wasn't about demanding something from God. Scripture says, do not test the Lord your God. <sighs> Fine, have it your way. Then the devil left Jesus until he could try tempting him again, later. And God sent angels to come and take care of Jesus. Jesus came to earth to rescue us. He knew that meant a difficult path and that in the end, he would have to give up his life. The devil was tempting Jesus to take the easy way out, but Jesus had spent his life studying and understanding God's words. So when the time came, he was ready to make the hard choice and do the right thing. The end. No food for 40 days? Yeah, I can't imagine going 40 more minutes without lunch. When I'm hungry, I don't usually make good choices. You and me both. But Jesus had practiced doing the right thing for a long time. So, what's, what's our part in the story? story? Well, Jesus faced some incredibly difficult choices, but he had spent his entire life preparing for that moment. God's words were ready in his heart and in his mind. So he was able to show self-control. Self-control is about choosing to do what's best, even when you don't want to. That's right. And just like Jesus, we can spend time discovering who God is and what God says, so we can be ready to do the right thing. So that's reading the Bible and memorizing verses, right? Absolutely. But it also means talking with your parents and other trusted adults about what God says. It means asking lots of questions. You can even get ready for tough choices before they even happen. Good point. Like you know that sometime in the next few days, your little brother will probably do something that frustrates you. Maybe he wrecks your Lego set. I'd wanna scream if that happened or maybe even throw something. That's the moment where you ask God for help. You can remember that God wants us to be kind to each other and forgive one another, just like God forgives us. Or maybe your mom just made these delicious chocolate chip cookies, but she says you can only have one before dinner. But then she leaves the room and you really, really want two cookies. That's when you can pause and remember that God wants us to honor and respect our parents. So you can ask God for the self-control to listen to your mom. And stop at one cookie. You got it. I think you're both ready to do the right thing. <laughs> See you next time. So here's the thing. Be ready to do the right thing. All this choosing is hard work. Right? Makes me thirsty. Want one? Is it vinegar or water? Both water, I promise. Good choice. Mm -hmm. Now, how about you help me choose which sport to play? Maybe all of them. 
Okay. Okay. Oh, oh. Thanks for joining us at the Story Lab. See you next time.